Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our automotive industry webinar today. Today's session is hosted by IFS and our partner Solstice. During today's session, we will be discussing the challenges faced by the automotive industry today and also sharing some insights into tools that can be used to overcome some of these challenges. Before I hand over to our speakers today, I'd like to mention that throughout the session, um, your mics will be muted as attendees. However, you do have a GoToWebinar yeah, panel with a question box. Um, and you can just pop your questions in there and we will get through to them at the end of the session. The session is now being recorded and we will share this recording with all of our attendees uh, in the coming yeah. days. Hi, Merle, we can we can hear you. Finally, I'd like to introduce our speakers that will be taking us through today's agenda. Merle, Director at Solstice Middle East, and also Andre from our pre-sales team at IFS. Without further ado, I would like to hand over to I'm the Director of Services at Middle East, Solstice Middle East. And we are headquarters at Dubai. And Solstice is a leading IT consulting and service company with a marquee of customers across the Middle East and Africa. And we are the division of uh, S Technologies, which is a global technology service company, providing an area of services and solutions in strategy, consulting, and digital and technologies. With over 6,000 plus highly engaged and talented employees, and a 40 plus global campuses, S has been the power of choice and partner of choice for 450 uh, Fortune large and mid-sized enterprises across the six continents. Now, let us start today's session on our perspective on the challenges faced by the automotive industry today. The automotive revolution is gradually speeding up. And we have entered a new era of transformation. Dramatic changes are ahead for the automotive aftermarket. And these include changing customer expectations, accelerated adoption of new technologies, and the shifts in competitive power. Thus, the value creation and the business models in the automotive aftermarket will also be fundamentally reshaped by these changes. No one would have imagined these many shifts to happen in the past decade itself. The Gulf automotive market is slowly shifting towards a, a service oriented model with the new players focusing extensively on customer experience and consumer data. The today's consumer talk more about systems and technologies rather the harsh power which we used to talk earlier. And amid this transformation, the COVID-19 outbreak is putting additional stress on the industry. In today's, we would look at our perspectives on the three cardinal questions, which are at the top priority now. So what are these three questions is, what is the speed of change? And what do the new value pools look like? And what is required to succeed in the future? The digital disruption is heavily impacting the automotive industry. And the digital mega trends are shaping up the automotive industry. For the past few years, the industry has been talking about few disruptive trends, which are changing the rules in the mobility sector. And these are the mainly the autonomous driving and shared mobility, connectivity, and of course, the electric vehicles of the electrification. When it comes to the autonomous driving, the SDT, the self-driving transport, 
and uh, Dubai has been a leading player for this. And uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum has announced a goal uh, that by 2030, 25 percent of all transportation trips in Dubai will be smart and driverless. And when you look at the shared mobility, I think you might be observing it. And uh, and recently, and according to the market report, the Middle Eastern and African uh, market is expected to uh, post a noteworthy CAGR of 26% uh, uh, if you take it from year 2018 to 25. And we have already started seeing the dominance of large shared mobility providers, uh, such as you know, DD, Accor, and U-Drive, Uber and Karim, etc. And pay per minute model operated by Ekar and Uday today in the UAE is the fastest growing shared mobility segment in the UAE. And how this is happening? Of course, there is a strong government support, such as a free RTA parking, and various other factors have boosted the growth in the segment. But the importance of car as a part of connected network for the consumers are growing. The percentage of consumers ready and willing to change the car brands for better connectivity has doubled over the past two years. In the premium segment, most of the OEMs have already installed fully connected infotainment systems today. And most of the vehicles are having 100% infotainment today. And these systems are uh, used to provide a diverse range of in-vehicle services, as you all know, to the drivers, and a diverse data set to third parties. On top of all these things, and uh, electrification, of course, you call it as electric vehicles, the EV, and according to the study from the research and markets, the UAE electric vehicle market is projected to grow at 32.1% of CAGR, uh, if you take the years from 2019 to 25. Under UAE Vision 2021, so the government is encouraging the adoption of electric vehicles in the country. And if you take the Dubai Al City and Water Authority or the Roads and Transportation Authority of UAE, they are working together for the development of electric vehicle market in the country by installing charging stations and of course providing high incentives such as the free parking or exemption from the tolls and the registration fees etc so there is a strong government support for this and for the customers and the OEMs and the dealers and their expectations are built based on the experiences built by their interaction with the disrupted industries and the change in the customer expectations and most of the customer today ask for personalized treatment from the automotive dealers and expect to get a value out of car buying experience. And to keep up the evolution, it's important for automakers or auto component manufacturer as well as the service providers to develop competencies required to tackle the increasing technological complexities today. So in this slide, so we are going to touch upon some of the major impacts on the key stakeholders in the Middle East region. So what are the key stakeholders here, which we are going to talk about is the OEMs and dealers, and tire one suppliers, and spare part distributors, and of course the workshops. So when it comes to the OEM and dealers, the more associations with the connectivity solution providers into the picture, a necessity of uh, electric uh, vehicle charging points or the infrastructure at the dealerships and demand for interior configurations to enhance capacity and comfort of course and on top of it there is a serious threat from the new technology players like google and apple etc when it comes to the taiwan suppliers and we see there's a decrease in uh, the spare parts so how it's happening is the electric vehicles have 32% fewer parts than the IC vehicles. 
And so th this is showing a clear, clear decrease in the number of auto spots. And there is a rise in demand for the inbuilt ent uh, entertainment uh, devices in the vehicles. And uh, there's a clear need for advanced uh, connectivity hardware and software capabilities. And uh, there is a serious threat, you know, uh, because the new supplier and specialists are entering into the value chain. So look at look at the, the spare part distributors and uh, the customers today are asking for a higher price transparency at the workshops. And uh, there's a clear rise in demand for uh, uh, vehicle entertainment, uh, the devices and softwares and uh, electronic parts, etc. So you can see that. And of course, on top of this, there is a clear rise in demand also for the spare parts from fleet customers uh, engaged in the shared vehicle business. So, on top of this, because of the electric uh, vehicles coming into the picture, so there is a serious threat to the uh, the new distributors as well. The workshops. Uh, if you look at the workshops, the demand for the special service packages uh, because of the shared mobility fleets. And there is a clear rise in the demand for the maintenance of the shared vehicles. And the demand for the enhanced software, sensors, and electronic capabilities. And uh, this is driving to a, a need for the predictive maintenance or the real-time breakdown services which are very much required. And all these trends have resulted in three major things. <clears throat> One is the, the disruption along the value chain, so which is clearly visible. And <clears throat> at the end of the day, sorry, <clears throat> a change in the end customer access. And there is a clear shift in the profit pools. So, in this slide, so we are trying to, to I'm trying to talk about some uh, navigating peaks and valleys in the volatile market, uh, such as, I mean, you, 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 we are going at a multi-speed now and multi-speed world creating a lot of opportunities and of course, equally threats. And uh, the technology is serving as a key differentiator for here and for automotive makers and suppliers. So the, the impact of these, uh, uh, the mega trends um, will significantly affect the future landscape of the automotive aftermarket industry. And without doubt, uh, there is no one size fit for all approach to tackle these challenges that all these uh, disruptive trends uh, we have covered. And finally, uh, to keep up the evolution and, and for the acceleration of the industry, and it is important for automakers and OEMs and distributors, as well as the service providers uh, to develop the competencies and to harness the power of digital technologies. So this is what I would like to say. And um, I'm going to stop here. Um, I presume that I have covered some of the key challenges for the automotive industry. In the next part of the session, uh, we are going to learn about some of the key digital solutions from our part, uh, the principal IFS. And uh, it's my great pleasure to invite Mr. Andre Michalski from pre-sales team of IFS, Middle East and South, East, uh, South Asia, and to take the session forward from here. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Morali. Uh, and hello everyone, I'm uh, Andre from IFS Middle East. I work in, in the pre-sales team for Middle East and South Asia. And I'm gonna show you a few slides on our solutions for the automotive industry. And then I'm gonna give you a live demo uh, in a second as well. So what I wanted to start with today is to cover just at a high level, uh, our solutions for uh, automotive and how they tie into what uh, Morali just 
went through uh, in his presentation. So we obviously we have support for OEMs and dealers for spare part distributions and as well as workshops with predictive and preventive maintenance service etc. But at a high level we we support the process processes all the way from CRM or marketing all the way through to uh, after sales services with complete uh, support for supply chain management, so both execution and planning with forecasting, uh, inventory management, etc. And all this is, is coupled with uh, our finance, uh, HR, document management solutions uh, as well. But for today's session, I want to focus on something that Morali mentioned in his presentation, uh, namely creating a personalized, engaging and seamless customer experience. And we believe that doing that requires three things. So number one is simplicity. So to engage with customers in today's digital world means that you need to create a single unified experience that basically simplifies their journey across any channel they choose to connect to you through, uh, be it a physical visit to, to uh, a dealership, through social media posts, uh, through emails, phone calls, whatever it may be. And with this ever increasing number of, of channels, delivering that seamless, consistent service, it, it's very complicated. But the key to doing it successfully is to create something that the customer feels is simple and seamless, even though it might not be in the back end. The second point is transparent, transparency. So the modern customers today demands updates, detailed information related to their purchases or whatever they're exploring and uh, uh, looking for, and they want it on demand. So they want it at any given point. And this is essential from the moment the customer is engaged with you guys, be it with a, a sales representative or through your website, all the way through placing an order, tracing that order, and finally to delivery of, of the vehicle or whatever they've ordered. And the same applies, of course, to after sales. So when you've actually delivered something, providing full visibility and access to vehicle service history, warranty details, et cetera, et cetera. All of this is, is crucial to, to create that superior customer experience. And then the last thing is shifting the focus. So it's not just about selling a product or a vehicle anymore or spare parts or a service contract, but the focus has shifted to a more service oriented and end-to-end -end customer experience. And this shift is not only a sort of a um, industry and a mindset change, it also of course puts a lot of requirements on the technology you need to support this journey. And we believe that we have that through our customer engagement platform uh, coupled with our ERP solution. So, I'll give you a quick overview of, of the customer engagement platform where I'll focus my demo today and then uh, we'll jump into uh, a live demo. So at, at the heart of this uh, customer engagement platform, you have something we call an omni-channel contact center. That can basically take any type of customer contact, be it calls, email, chat, uh, social media, access through your website, through to self-service uh, offerings, etc., and route it to uh, the correct or the best representative within your company to deal with this information that 
either the customer is asking for or uh, that they're providing you. Then we have the intelligent desktop that basically makes sure that when a customer interacts with you, you have the relevant information about that customer at your fingertips. So let's say I call into a dealership or a workshop. As long as you know my phone number and have that stored in the system, the intelligent desktop can, can pull together information from multiple different systems, not just IFS. If you had multiple other systems, it can sort of create a unified view of that customer's uh, previous activations or engagements with you and provide that to whoever is picking up the phone or answering an email. And then the last piece uh, is the intelligent response system, which is basically uh, natural language processing and AI technology uh, to provide answers through self-service to, to customers, uh, either through uh, the use of chatbots that you can publish on your website or through voice uh, where a customer might call and, and just uh, ask what's what's the status of my order for this car or when is my next service uh, for example and without a human actually having to interact with the customer they can basically get that answer based on information you have in your systems which means you can provide this service 24 7 without actually having someone that necessarily needs to work so without further ado, I'll jump into uh, the actual portal that I've built for this occasion. So this is just a home screen that I've set up for this automotive webinar. It is uh, based on this customer engagement platform and the aim is to build a unified view of information uh, for the person that's logged in. That might be uh, a sales rep, it might be a call center agent, it might be a manager, and they might have access to different types of information that's important. Uh, it's also integrated out of the box with social media, uh, as well as, as um, as I mentioned, we have chatbots and intelligent uh, response integrated as well. Uh, so just for demo purposes, normally in a live environment, I wouldn't have to search manually. Instead, you would use uh, phone numbers of an incoming call or maybe uh, a handle from Twitter to find the relevant customer details based on incoming data. But now for this demo, I'm just going to do a search manually. And as happens every time you do a demo, I've, I've had some uh, connectivity issues this morning. So I'm hoping this will uh, work out fine, but bear with me. We'll see. No, I'm getting unlucky again. But basically what I put in was just a phone number. Normally that would just come from the phone system that will then execute uh, queries and fetch information about that customer calling. So here we go. I'll try that again. There we go. So by entering that phone number, I've now identified a customer in my system. So immediately I get a, a, some details about the customer. I get the customer ID. Gabra. Sorry. Uh, uh, I get a, a customer ID, I get details about their phone numbers, insurance company, whatever information we have that's relevant about this customer. And I also get some additional details about this specific customer uh, in terms of where they're living, uh, the last time we were in contact with them, so if we have that information, we can present it at a glance. So you, you get this, 
relevant information when someone might be calling. I can see the last purchase date, I can see the last service date, and I can also see in, that this customer has an upcoming service. As you'll notice here, I also have a, a number of buttons here where I can access more information if I want to. If I want to have a look at the purchase history for this customer, for example, I can click on purchase history. That will then link me into our sales orders uh, and give me more details about what they actually bought, uh, what the purchase dates were, uh, as well as, as information about the customer. Uh, I can see service history. So if this customer has, has done service with us, you can click here and get uh, details about service history for his vehicle or vehicles. Uh, and that links into our maintenance module where, where we can handle preventive maintenance, predictive maintenance, as well as, as warranty management and, and service for vehicles and, and spare parts. I can see if we have any open business opportunities with this customer. Uh, so we can see here that we have an opportunity to sell him a new car. And this is now linking us into the CRM component as opposed to sales orders or uh, work orders. And I can see here that uh, I have an opportunity. I can check if we have any linked business activity. Yeah, we have scheduled an activity to follow up with this customer to book a test drive. And then click on customer details to go back to the first screen or the first tab uh, where I also have some additional information. So we can click on vehicles to get more details about the actual cars that we've sold. Uh, and this then links into the asset management piece of the application. Uh, so obviously this is just a demo example. I, I would normally have a lot more information here, but I can see that he has two cars with IDs. I can see when we sold them, the next service date. From here, I could create a new service request if I wanted to. So if we actually needed to raise like a, a on-demand uh, fix for this car, I could click on this, or I can click on warranties to see if if there's actually any active warranty for these cars. That will take me to a warranties tab in this scenario and give me details about warranties for each of the vehicles, how long they're valid and what type of, of uh, warranty it is. So it might be a customer warranty, it might be manufacturer warranty or, or supplier warranty. And I can drill into more details about the warranty as well. Uh, if I want to look at, at contacts at this customer, so maybe uh, the phone number is linked to Andrew Mikoli, but there's multiple people uh, or multiple contacts uh, provided. I can drill in and see more details. So maybe his wife is actually calling in from, from a landline or from his cell phone, and you want to see details about that as well. From here, you can obviously also call the customer if, if uh, that's required, and you can also create new contacts if need be. Uh, and one of the, the nicest things here, and something we'd normally sort of have pop up automatically if, if a customer calls in or, or you're uh, interacting with the customer somehow, is something we call customer in interactions or customer activations. So this will basically give me a list of all our interactions with this specific customer. So reading from the bottom up, you can basically see that our first uh, recorded interaction in this system is basically when we sent a quote for a car to the customer. Then we can basically follow uh, 
the life cycle of this customer and the, our engagements with this customer. So we can see we sold the car, we can see that he had it in for service, we can see that through CRM and uh, marketing campaigns, we've actually sent him an email promoting some new models, and we can see which email we actually sent it to. We can see that the customer actually visited uh, the showroom a few weeks after we actually sent the campaign, and then he booked the test drive. We called him to follow up after the test drive, and then we ended up selling a new car. So having this at your fingertips, as soon as someone engages with you, is invaluable to providing uh, a superior customer experience. Uh, a few other things that you can also do, either uh, to use internally, or if you want to expose things on your website or create a self-service portal for customers, is, for example, a, a model catalog. So on the left-hand side, I, I just added some examples of cars, uh, where I then have the, the option to click on one to get more details about this particular model. This could, for example, run on an iPad or a tablet on the, the shop uh, showroom floor. So a sales rep could actually walk around with this portal and have uh, the customer either click himself or click through the different models and explain details about these cars to a customer walking through the door. Uh, we also have so if, if you also have a part of your business where you do service and, and help with insurance claim, we can, of course, register these insurance claims through the, the portal as well. You can enter information about the insurance company unless it's already known and you can just fetch the customer information and pre-populate a lot of this. You can upload supporting documentation, of course, if, if the customer brings or sends documentation or if you need to take some pictures or something. And you can also have uh, a view of any open claims, either globally in your company for a specific uh, dealership or workshop or for a specific uh, uh, country or, or city, for example. You can also get a, a nice view of open orders. So this looks into the actual uh, sales order piece of, of the application and gives you details about open orders. And I also have a section for orders closed in the last six months. And then again, you can obviously drill into more details to see uh, any relevant information related to that specific order. Uh, we also have something we call wall boards or metrics where you can basically uh, create dashboards with graphs and stuff to, to track and, and, and follow trends or, or rolling sales or whatever it may be. So here I've, I've just set up a couple of examples uh, to break down uh, our income or revenue for net new sales and upgrades for the past six months. I can see our sales trend. So again, with the impact of COVID, maybe we had a big drop in sales. And then as we get better and better with handling COVID, obviously it's, it's going to increase again and hopefully uh, surpass what it was before COVID. Uh, we can also present the data in different ways. So a radar chart, for example, basically showing the same thing as up here. And then we can also see brand distribution, for example, in a donut chart or, or a pie chart, where you basically get a breakdown of, of uh, what's been sold in terms of brands. And these can, of course, also be interactive. So they could be possible to click on to bring up more details about 
a specific brand or a specific month, maybe you want to see what what did we actually sell to arrive at this 12.5 million number. And the last thing I'll show you before, uh, and let me just see if I can get this back. One second. I just wanted to show you uh, the chat bot we have as well. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have, uh, oh, I'm having some connectivity issues again. There we go. We also have uh, intelligent response. So chatbots and natural language processing with, with uh, basically robots or AI responding to customers without you actually having to, to answer as a physical human being. So I just wanted to show you an example of the chatbot. A lot of our customers have exposed these on their websites. Uh, so you, a customer can get information uh, easily. Uh, but now I'm uh, using it for internal purposes. So I'm basically asking here, what campaigns are we currently running? The chatbot can then go in and check our running campaigns and provide me details uh, about what's currently running. So we have a car tuning uh, campaign here. I can click show details and the, the bot can fetch whatever information is required. Here I'm fetching a sort of like a, a campaign statement or the, the most important details about this campaign. Uh, and this can, of course, be exposed, as I said, externally to your uh, customers as well. And if you then have people actually working with, with uh, answering your customers, like a, a call center or sales reps that, that talk to customers, this can also automatically hand over to an agent uh, if they start asking questions that you either want a human to actually answer or if the chatbot basically runs into dead end in terms of what it is actually able to do. And then it can hand over to a human with all the history of what the customer has actually discussed with the customer. And then the, the, the interaction can basically continue seam seamlessly. So the key takeaway is basically the customer doesn't want to repeat himself. And with this uh, platform, we provide you with the tools to avoid that scenario. So without further ado, I just wanted to jump back and show you uh, the solution map again. So we obviously uh, support the full end-to-end -end, both for dealers and distributors uh, as well as as for spare parts uh, we also do a lot of manufacturing for the automotive industry if that's uh, of interest uh, but today we just focus basically on this crm ce part of of the solution with integrations into the supply chain into the customer management into the service uh, management module uh, so without further ado i'll hand over to leah and we're going to go through and see if there are any questions so thank you all very much for listening i hope it was interesting